Good morning guys and welcome to this video. Um, this is an upgrade video for a Acer laptop. Uh, we are going to be upgrading the SSD and memory on this Acer laptop. Today uh, the Acer laptop is an Acer ES15 model 522. So we will be upgrading the memory and the uh, swapping out and migrating the hard drive to SSD today. And here we go. So there are a total of 18 screws uh, located on this laptop, all of which uh, need to come out. I'm afraid. Um, this is a complete strip down uh, of the laptop for what should be a fairly simple memory upgrade and hard drive swap. We actually have to disassemble the, the whole laptop. Um, so make sure you get all your screws out there, um, especially this one, because uh, you're going to need to remove the CD drive um, to get the case off now. I found the plastic pretty tough on this case to get off, um, but it does come off. Um, with a uh, um, case removal tool, so um, just be just be extra careful once you're removing the case from the uh, from the main laptop, um, and do make sure you've got all of those screws out, otherwise this won't come apart. Um, okay, moving on. So now we've separated the case from the main laptop, uh, you can see we have a number of ribbons here. So we have in this model three ribbons which we need to disconnect in order to completely remove this. Um, so what you'll notice is there's some slight toggles there on this side, and on this side, and on this side. So if you slowly shift those toggles away, um, those cables will come out. So with these two toggles here, this one with the big data cable, you just literally push the two white toggles down. Once those are pushed down, you should see that the cable will just pop out there. Same with these two, once you push them down, the cable just pops out. With this one, it actually, it's a flip, it's a flip up situation. So you're just literally flipping that cable up and then that cable pops out. So now we can see that now that the cables are disconnected, we can now remove this main component from the laptop. Just place that one side. And we are left with the exposed Acer laptop. So we're gonna be taking a look at replacing the hard drive and the memory which is tucked away on the underside of this. So it is a complete strip down of the laptop. All right, so let's let's get into it. Firstly, we need to disconnect the battery. So we'll be disconnecting that. Um, there are two main connectors for the battery here. So we need to disconnect those. And then we need to remove the bat, um, we need to leave, we can leave the battery in, but we need to then we remove the hard drive and the main board to, um, to replace the memory. So let's uh, take a look at how we're going to get some of these components out. So we've got the hard drive here, two screws on the hard drive, one here, get that out. and one on the other side. Okay, so that should technically be the only things holding the hard drive in place. You can then just I'll gently slide it out. And 
that's our hard drive. Old mechanical hard drive there. Um, we're going to be replacing that today with a crucial SSD. Uh, I don't know if you can just see that. It's a 2.5 inch, 500 gig um, SSD. Okay, um, so what we'll do is we'll set that away, um, copying over to uh, doing a disk copy to this one, and then we'll install this one. Um, in the in the casing and then put the casing back in at the next stage. So we've got the hard drive out now. So next we want to take a look at getting this main board out. So um, we have a Wi-Fi chip here over here. Uh, this is held in by one screw. Okay, so we get the one screw for the Wi-Fi. Slots out there. Okay, just made that on one side. And then we've got this main board here, which we need to um, need to remove, um, along with the with the fan here. So um, first things first. So for the main board, we've just got one screw here. So we're going to take that up. Should have mentioned that we did disconnect the battery cable here. It's just a slide out. So you just literally push that out and it comes out. Um, so we've got one screw here for the main board. And with the fan, um, you can probably leave that in place. I'm just gonna see. It is actually connected by these small wires to this fan cable here, so we can probably just disconnect the fan. So just pop that little fan cable out. Just be careful, the wires are very, very small on the fan cable. So we just want to make sure those don't get damaged. And we just need to remove the second cable here. So just to keep you updated on progress, so we have now removed um, the secondary cable from down here from the back from the board. Um, I've also removed the two screws from the fan. This gives us a bit of maneuverability on the fan um, and just allows us to um, lift up this main this main board here. Okay, um, so now that comes out kind of freely. It's still attached to a cable down here, so just be aware of that. And if we turn that over, we can see we actually have two RAM slots here. One uh, is already consumed with one 8 gig chip, and we've got a space to put, um, to put another chip in there. So today we're going to be installing 8 gigabytes this is not great on that one. Um, let's come out. There we go. Eight gigabytes DDR3 um, RAM. Again, crucial on on that one. So we're going to be putting that in there to make 16 to make 16 gig. So let's get going. So I have done the drive copy now. So I'm just going to take the old hard drive out of the chassis and I'm going to put the new hard drive into the chassis. Uh, there are four screws. Uh, so one, two, three, four. So I'm just going to take those out now and swap the hard drive over. So we're just going to install the new memory module now. Um, important to make sure that you've got uh, anti-static wristband attached um, just so that you don't uh, cause any issues to the memory while handling. 
Um, when installing the memory, you can only go one way. Um, this will be clear on the uh, motherboard and the memory chip. As you can see, one side is longer than the other side. And basically, on the board, there is a slot. And one side is also longer than the other side. Now when you slot the memory chip in, as I say, it can only go in one way because of one side is longer than the other, so you should see the groove. And basically you slot it in at like a 45 degree angle like that. And just make just push that in gently just to make sure that all the pins are, are lined up there. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to push that down and it's going to click in a place like that. And that's the memory installed. Um, memory is installed now. So uh, on to the uh, reassembly stage. So once we get to reassembly, um, the key thing to remember is that you want to make sure everything is lined up correctly in the board. So here I've replaced the board in its right position and we're going to have to reconnect the Wi-Fi chip. We're going to have to screw in the board here. We're going to have to plug in the hard drive, that'll be the last thing we do. And then we're going to have to re reseat the fan, replug in the fan, uh, replug in the small fan power cable, and then reattach the um, reattach the the two battery connectors. Okay, so let's get started. Starting by re-screwing in the fan. These components are a bit fiddly. That's the CPU fan plugged back in. That doesn't actually plug in, it just lines up correctly there. And just before I go any further, I'm just going to double check everything is uh, correct. Okay, so I'm happy with how everything's going so far. So uh, we've reattached the main board using the screw. 
we have reattached the Wi-Fi chip using that screw and the two screws on the uh, fan there. Reattached fan cable, I'm happy that's sitting comfortably. We're now going to attempt to reconnect the battery connectors. So we've got this little black one, just slot that in there. And just before I do the main one here, I will plug in the hard drive um, back into its position. Okay, so that just slots in there nicely. We've got two screws to replace, one there and one there. So I'll go ahead and do that now, just before we put the battery cable back in there. So I used, um, I ended up using uh, a Cronus to do the disc clone. Took a took a good few hours to run to do the disc clone, um, but you can use any kind of tool out there. There's there's East US, um, but I, I, I prefer a Cronus. Just does the job nice. Uh, does a straight disc clone for you. Uh, one disc to the other. So that's it. Let's get this battery connector reattached. That is looking good there. Got the battery cable we firmly attached there, tucked away nice and neat. So all of these looking very very tight, very very secure. So now we're going to go ahead and put the keyboard back on and reattach the chassis and boot this guy up and see how we're doing. Stay tuned. So that's the cables reattached now. Um, that did take longer than I expected. They are really fiddly. What I would just say is be really patient. Um, make sure those notches are fully down uh, when you put the cable in and then just obviously flip the notches up to reattach the cable securely. Uh, make sure that cable is all the way in. Um, and before putting the chassis back on, uh, and clipping it in because this plastic is really really tough. I'm just going to power this up now and make sure I'm getting to a login screen um, before before I reattach the casing. So really good news before I attach the case back on this is booting up nicely um, with the new SSD and memory installed. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and sign into the machine and we can verify the new disk and memory is all looking fine.